Okay, and once again, uh, this presentation is about how Disney can teach about compare and contrast, and she'll be presented by uh, Ms. Terry Beadle. She's currently a professor at Wusong University, and she's had several stints in various institutions. Currently, of course, she's at Wusong, and she's currently also taking her uh, doctorate in education at the University of Illinois. Uh, Disney is something that I'm sure everybody has uh, no doubt uh, once in their lives have uh, probably uh, either watched a movie or heard about. So I'm looking forward to the, this presentation. So uh, without further ado, Terry, please start. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world, what, what your time frame is. So yes, what I'm gonna be talking about is a little bit about Disney and how we can use Disney with compare and contrast. Um, a lot of people think Disney is just straight kids only, but it actually can work really well with adults because the original fairy tales that they came from are not kid friendly, kind of. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Um, first of all, what I'd like to get into is a little bit of logistics. Um, if you do have questions, please put them in the chat box. And when I'm at a break part or taking a breath or changing the slide, I'll try and address the questions at that point. And then at the end, we'll have verbal questions. So you can ask verbal questions at the end. So let's get started. First about me, um, I do have a bachelor's degree in art and graphic design from the University of New Mexico. Um, I have an MED in uh, adult literacy and then an MA in TESOL. And like I said, I'm working on my doctorate currently. I have worked at four different universities over the last 12 years, um, two in the United States, one in Turkey, and currently I am in South Korea. Okay, let me go, we'll start right now. So what can Disney tell us? What information can we get? Well, we'll start with, I've got three of the most popular um, fairy tales that, that we talk about and the most popular um, movies that we have. The first one we're going to talk about is Cinderella. Okay. Cinderella, we all know, glass slipper, prince, yay, fun, happily ever after, which is a common theme for Disney. But in the original fairy tale, there is some major, major issues that the students really get into when they read about it. Um, one of the biggest things is the bad parenting. The stepmother when the prince comes and has the girls try on their, their shoes, she actually tells her girls, eh, cut off your toes. You don't need them. When you, when you become queen, people will carry you around. You don't need to walk. And then she tells the other one, eh, cut off your heel. You don't need it. You're going to be a queen. Who cares? Make your foot fit in that shoe. And so that's some really interesting things that the students pull out themselves. They're like, wait a minute, whoa. This mom is telling her to defigure herself just to become a queen? What is up with that? That is so weird. And the other thing that's interesting in Cinderella is that um, her father in the original fairy tale is actually alive. And he doesn't think of his daughter as like a, a daughter. He thinks of her as like, eh, she's my ex-wife's daughter. Does, she does, he doesn't have any kind of connection to her whatsoever. And he doesn't treat her like a good person. And so in the original fairy tale, the way that the stepsisters, the stepmom treat her is actually the same way her father treated her. Whereas with Disney, you know, her father treated her like she's the princess, like she's a queen, like she's awesome, like she's best. And so the kids really do, the students, excuse me, not kids, the students really do pull this out and they do really understand those differences. The next one we're gonna talk about is Snow White. Now, Snow White is very interesting because in the original uh, reading, um, she's seven years old. And so to think about this seven-year-old girl who goes off and marries this prince, it's kind of freaky and kind of scary. It's kind of odd, right? And the original, the prince actually sees her as a trophy, as a girl in a glass case. He doesn't see her as, oh, my true love. Oh, I want to live ever, ever 
happily ever after with her. He doesn't see that at all. And the biggest difference is, is that the queen actually tries to kill her three times. When I talk to my students about it, they're always like, Disney only talks about the apple. We only know about the apple. But these other ones, they're kind of horrible too. Because one of the times she tries to kill her is with a comb for her hair, right? Something to put her hair up with, which during the time, women did that all the time. The other way she tried to kill her was with a corset. And so when we're reading, it's actually very interesting to find out how many students know what a corset is. When I ask the boys, they always think, because in the reading, they call it laces. When I ask the boys, they always think shoelaces. And so they're trying to figure out how does she die from shoelaces? I don't understand. And a couple of times I'll have some goth girls in class and they are, they'll explain to the boys what a corset is and how a corset is used usually in their home languages. And so that kind of helps out a little bit because then the students are like, whoa, whatever, that's wild. Wow, that is so crazy. But they do enjoy it. They do enjoy it, okay? Okay. So our next one, and I do apologize, I am going by this very quickly. Um, the next one is very, to me, is the most different one from the fairy tale to the uh, Disney version. Rapunzel, which has been renamed Tangled in Disney World, um, Rapunzel is a very interesting story because yes, she does go live with Gothel. Gothel doesn't kidnap her like she does in the movie, but her father actually gives her away because during the pregnancy, her mother really, really, really craved Rapunzel, which is kind of like a leafy um, lettuce type of vegetable. And this witch, this old witch had this garden that had Rapunzel in it. And so the father went and stole it one night and the witch is like, uh, uh you don't steal from me. If you try to steal from me, that's not good. You have to give me your daughter. And so when they, when she was born, she gave it to her. She did grow up in a tree house. She did grow up by herself with all of that and away from everybody. But she did meet the prince and the prince would come to her every day and they would talk and they would fall in love and all of that stuff. Um, however, one of the very most interesting things is that kind of in the middle to, or the three quarters of the way through the story, they talk about Rapunzel having twins. And students are like, wait, what? Ha, ha, what? So at some point, you know, they got married, but they didn't really talk about being married. And she ended up being pregnant. So it's like, mm -hmm. they had sex. That's like the horrible thing. That's like the worst thing, right? So Disney definitely had to cut that out because that's not something that's acceptable for Disney. The what's really nice and what I really do like about some of the information that they have was that in the end, Rapunzel does save her love, right? The same in the movie as well as in the book. And she does save him with the tears. So they do keep the magical part, but they take out the unseemly part that they don't like. Okay. What I usually do with my students is after we've read a few of them and what they, after we've read a few of them and we've watched the movies, I have them go and either talk to international students or in this day and age of pandemic, I have them researching other fairy tales from different areas of the world. And then they create a Disney-fied version of that fairy tale. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a video right now of my students' presentation of their Disney-fied video. So they're gonna talk about the original fairy tale and then a talk about how they would Disney-fy it. And so this kind of shows you that there are some um, 
really good connections that are happening between the students. Um, Okay, so the first question up here, I was just looking is uh, talking about Cinderella. Isn't the point that the stepmother suggests girls need to marry a prince at any cost? Pretty much, yeah. That's basically what she's saying. She's like, you know what? Who cares what you look like as long as you marry the prince? It doesn't matter, right? And so that is um, a lot about what that fairy tale was talking about, right? Okay, so let's take a look at our Disney-fied versions. We had a uh, one month ago, we had an interview with Kazakhstan student. So we will introduce a fairy tale named Ardar Koze in Kazakhstan. The Ardar Koze means the man who has no bread and resourceful in Kazakh language. There are many stories about Ardar Koze in Kazakhstan. One of the famous episodes is Ardar Kose death and then Ardar Kose treat the rich man named Bai. On a cold winter's day, Ardar Kose was riding his horse and he saw he was wearing a thin perforated coat. Then he saw the rich man Bai and he immediately took off his coat. Bai asked, isn't it cold? Then he said, it was a magic cold and it was so warm that it had a hole. First, he offered to trade a magic coat for a fur coat and a hat. Ardar Kose declined. He offered again to trade fur coat, hat, new horse, and the back of the world. He accepted an offer. Ardar Kose ride on the new horse and say, the magic in the court works only for me. Goodbye. Uh, he is a kid, but by using his wit and wisdom, he took away the richest property and he gives it back to the poor people. He is a stubborn character to become a Disney character, but we think there are something more to it. First, in Ardar Kose's story, uh, there is the romance. So, we want to put a princess or noble woman as his love. Second is his age. If the romance is added to Ardar Kose, we think he needs to be older, like 15 or 17. And there must be the animals. Most of Disney's movies, there are animals to help. So, Ardar Kose needs to need animals partner like Rapunzel's Pascal. And last, we hope there is a lesson about sharing. Not possess all, sometimes we give them for somebody. We'd like to put this lesson in Ardar Kose. That's all. Okay, so as you can see with my students, they really did understand that there was a Disney theory or not theory um, a formula that they used to make Disney movies and they took the original Kazakhstan story and made it kind of a Disney-fied version um, in this day and age with our pandemic my current students are actually creating a comic using Pixton and I'll put that in the chat box so you guys can see what that is um, Pixton is a way to make uh, um, it's not free, unfortunately, but it's a way to make comics for students. And it's a real good way to let students who don't necessarily have a high level of English um, do their best at giving you the idea of what they want to do. Um, my, like I said, my current students are creating that, so I don't have any of that to show you. Uh, well, hopefully at the end of the semester, we will. I have somebody else who's saying hi to everybody, so I apologize. I have a cat who decides she likes to join classes most of the time. Um, and I think by using the differences and Disney-fying these, um, these uh, fairy tales that we're reading, the students really do get an understanding of compare and contrasting. They really do like the fact that 
these movies and these readings are so different, but yet so similar. Uh, my current class, we were just we just did Little Mermaid, and if anybody has ever read The Little Mermaid, um, it's very interesting because in the end she dies, but because she chose not to kill the prince, the fairies from the clouds come down and save her. So she becomes a fairy that helps humans. And we talked about it in class and my students were like, wow, that's really good because it tells you that, you know, if you are, if you are good to people, then you get to go to heaven. And I was, I was floored that these students were making the connection of these fairies in the clouds to angels in heaven. And I was, I was, I was very proud of them actually for doing that. And the best thing was, was that that wasn't my best student who made that connection. It was actually my close to worst student who made that collection connection. And it's something that makes me very proud as a teacher that they can make those connections three quarters of the way through the semester. It clicks. Okay. So I know I talked really, really fast. We're up to the part where if anybody has any questions, you can ask. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time. It's a very short period, but I would definitely entertain any questions that you might have. Okay, guys, we do have one question, but before that, I just want to make sure that we give Terry her uh, due appreciation. So if you guys could please um, unmute your mics and please give her a lively round of applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, looking at the time, we, we do have about seven minutes uh, for questions. Uh, I believe Hudson asked, um, there were two questions, I think, by Hudson, and I'd like to just repeat it. One of them was, okay. students read the original, so students read the original fairy tale and also watch and then compare? Yes, and I, I do apologize that I didn't explain that close enough in the beginning. Um, we do a reading, and then I actually got permission from Disney to show the movies over Zoom. So now it's better. <laughs> so I can actually show them over Zoom. Um, and so we watch them as a class and then we talk about it, about some of the similarities, some of the differences. Um, I have them write a compare and contrast essay or a compare and contrast list. I have them work in groups and they come up with some of the same things that they can, you know, can they figure out what's similar? Can they figure out what's different? Um, and then we write them on a Google doc because the whiteboard, unfortunately in Zoom is not big enough for us to use. And when I'm in a classroom, I usually have about four different whiteboards in the classroom. So I give them the four whiteboards to use. Um, but now, because of logistics and stuff, I use Google Docs. The problem that we have with Google Docs, though, is that some of our students are still in China. So I have to make sure that the Chinese students are connected to somebody in Korea so that the Korean students can use their Google Docs. But we do, we do the compare and contrast and they do write essays on that also. Okay, thank you for, for telling us about some of the logistics. I'm sure everybody had that on their mind. Uh, another question, um, I have to switch to Kanita now. Uh, do you think that the students will find that Disney girls are dependent on princesses all the time as their uh, saviors? Um, kind of, but they think, they think it's just a Disney-fied version of a fairy tale. Um, I try to work into letting them know that, you know, these are Disney-fied. This is Disney's image. Disney wants to make sure that everybody lives happily ever after. Um, I would love to be able to teach Mulan or to be able to teach Frozen, except there are no real fairy tales that are close. Frozen is loosely based off of the Ice Queen. Ice Queen, Ice Queen, I can't remember what it is. But if you actually read it, there really is nothing that's similar. 
And so I can't really use that in class. Um, the ones that I use in class are usually the ones that I can get a scaffolded version of with the original wording or the original idea through it. Um, but some of the ones, like I'm trying to find a good Hercules version for my students to read and I can't find that. Um, I do have Aladdin, which I might try in my next class to see how they work with Aladdin. But it's one of those that, unfortunately, that's Disney's mantra. They, they have that mantra of, you know, the girls rely on the guys to save them sometimes. Okay. Thank you for answering that. Uh, we have another question for Mr. Merle. Uh, you may have addressed this a little bit. Uh, do students kind of blindly search for fairy, fairy tales or uh, do you guide them somewhat? Normally in normal class, not pandemic time, we actually have a very huge international um, student body on campus. And every semester we have at least one activity where all of the students get together. And usually during that time, I ask them, go talk to the international students and find out what their favorite fairy tale is from their hometown, from their home state, from their home country. And most of the time the students come back with these fairy tales I've never even heard of. And so they tell me their name and I, I look them up and I read them before they give me their their presentation. But um, unfortunately, now in this time, they have to actually look it up. Um, there are a couple of websites that list uh, like the hundred top fairy tales from other countries or from other areas. And so they try to look those up and I give them those websites. Thank you. Mr. Merle, I hope your questions were addressed. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merle. Um, we have another one from uh, Lee Jin Tzu. I hope I got that right. Do you provide guiding questions to help start their discussions? That's a good question. Um, sometimes in the beginning I do. So we usually start with Cinderella because that's the easiest one. And I do start the with some guiding questions like, you know, what, what did the girls do to their feet? Why do you think they did that? And, you know, try to get them questions. There's some other parts where um, the birds are actually pecking the girl's eyes out, the stepsister's eyes out. And so we talk about some of these really gross things and talk about why Disney didn't put that in their movie. Why do you think Disney didn't put that in a movie? Um, and usually by the third, which is Tangled Rapunzel, they don't need any help because they start asking each other these questions and they start coming up with these answers themselves and they ask me questions. Um, but in the beginning, I do, I, I do add some guiding questions. Okay. All right, Terry, you were very helpful in answering those questions. Um, unfortunately, at this point, I will uh, have to uh, finish the question and answer portion, and I shall also be uh, turning off the recording. But before I turn it off, can we give uh, Terry another uh, virtual round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody has any questions, I do have my uh, information up on the screen. You can send me a message. Um, in, in Korea, we use Kakao, but I do have a WhatsApp account, so you can send me a message anyway, and I will answer as best as I possibly can, or I can provide you with the PDFs that I give my students also. Okay. Guys, I'll, I, I'll be stopping the recording right now for everybody who wants to know that, and I am stopping now. Um, <laughs>